This lesson is on dilations of figures. So dilate means to shrink or enlarge, meaning like when your eye dilates, it can get bit, the pupil can get bigger or smaller. So that's what dilate means, shrinking or making something enlarged, <clears throat> making it smaller or larger. It's the same with shapes. So you can dilate shapes and um, we call the dilating, we, we call, uh, what we use to dilate shr and, and uh, shrink and enlarge shapes is using a scale factor, a scale factor, okay? And I just wanna remind you that factor, factor means to multiply. <clears throat> that's that's um, one of the vocabulary terms when you're multiplying something, factors, the numbers that you're multiplying. So uh, it's a hint but what, was what we're going to do with the scale factor. So if you have a shape and you're told to dilate it with a scale factor of three, for example, you draw a shape from the original. The original is uh, your original, and you're going to use a scale factor of three to draw that shape, which is going to be three times bigger than the original shape. So how do you do that? Well, you know, every shape on a coordinate grid has those points, and each point is an ordered pair. So all you have to do, literally, is multiply each and every number in every ordered pair, each X and each Y in each ordered pair, like here, times your scale factor. And in this case, when we said it's times three, well, if this is one of my ordered pairs, one of my points on my shapes, then I'm gonna multiply each number by three and it becomes six and nine. So this ordered pair, three times larger is this. So three times two, three times three, and that is your dilated, part of your dilated shape. That's one of the points. You just do it to all of the points, and then you graph. Okay, what about when you have a scale factor of one half? So I want you to think of this. Your house is three times bigger than mine, and then, there's somebody else that their house is half the size of mine. So when you're saying three times bigger than mine, you say that your house is bigger than mine. And if mine's the original and you're the larger house, then you're three times bigger than the, than the original. Now, when you have a scale factor of one half, that's saying that the original is bigger and that the new copy that's gonna be made, the final figure, is gonna be half the size of the original figure. So if your house is half the size of mine, well, my house is bigger than yours, okay? Okay, so what do you do when you have a scale factor of a fraction? What if it's one-fourth, one-half, two-thirds? Um, you still multiply it times every ordered pair. It's the same thing. So here's an ordered pair of six-eight. So if I'm going to take half of that shape and I'm going to make this half the size, I'm going to multiply each number by one half. Well, when you just say half, you can just say half of six is three, half of eight is four. So you just take half of, of any number. Okay, so the last thing I need to say before we get started is there's going to be questions that you have to answer that is, has to do with this over here. And what this is saying is, when you have a scale factor of bigger than one, of, of greater than one, the shapes will get bigger. The shapes will be larger than the original if the scale factor is larger or greater than one, like this. When it was three times bigger, the shape that we draw will be three times bigger than the original shape. Scale factors of less than one when it says less than one, they're talking about one half, three fourths, two thirds, one fourth, one eighth. Aren't all of those fractions less than one? Mm -hmm. So if you have a scale factor less than one, the shape will be smaller than the original shape. And we will have to answer questions on that. So just be mindful of that as we work. Okay, so now we're ready. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do these problems that we have. Um, in the figure below, do a dilation. Let me see if I can go up in a little bit. Okay, I can move my, all my cords. Okay, so uh, do a dilation um, at the center of the origin. Don't worry about any of that. They're just saying, you know, that everything that we do, we're doing straight, we're doing from 
uh, zero, zero out. That's too technical for you, Never mind. <laughs> the scale factor is one half. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it one half of the size. And then when we do that, after we do it using this little tool here, we're gonna have to write our, our ordered pairs, our, our ordered pairs of our original. So we'll be putting those ordered pairs in here and here. And then we'll do the final figure when we cut it in half and we make this half the size, we're gonna put the new ordered pairs in here for the copy. All right, so down here, if you notice right here, dilation, there's this little scale thing. Now this one, you cannot just tap and move. You do have to push down. So hopefully you'll hear my sound. All right, well, you can also see me moving the, the Chromebook and I can see how I can move it. And look what happens when I'm doing that on the screen. It creates the shape for us. We don't have to even draw it. It just automatically resizes that <clears throat> that little line segment and when a second ago when I said we all we, you know the when we're um, we're centered at the origin according to this these are the order pairs and I'm gonna get new order pairs for this one, once I dilate it but it dilates um, using order pairs going from zero to the right and zero up you know that'll make a little bit more sense in a minute so I'm gonna go down there's one and that's where it will always default and start. Well, I'm gonna go less than one. There's three fourths, there's one half. How do I know? Because each little mark is worth a fourth. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths, okay? So there's my scale factor of one half. Here it is, okay? Here was my original, and now that's my new one. And if you forget which is which, just look, try moving it around and you'll realize, okay, so when it's blue, that's after I have um, created a dilation of one half. Now I just have to answer the questions over here. So I'm gonna go from my original figure, which was the larger figure. You have to do the order pairs. You always do X first and then Y, that's four, eight. So four, eight is my left ordered pair, okay? And then my right order pair is six, four, I'm just looking at the graph and, sh and reading the ordered pairs. There's an ordered pair on the right, there's an ordered pair on the left, left, right. Now left, right for my little half size, my new final figure, my, my left one is, left point is two, four. And then <clears throat> on my right is three, two. So we'll go three, two, okay. Now I want you to notice, so here's, there's, that's, we've taken care of that and we've taken care of that and that's it for the um, question, but I do wanna show you something. Look at those ordered pairs and it says a scale factor of half. When you look at four and eight, what's half of four? Two. What's half of eight? Four. What's half of six? Three. What's half of four? Two. So what, like I said, you're just taking half. The scale factor is times one half, so, I don't have to go four times one half. I just go, what's half of four? Two, half of eight, four. This gets to be very easy in some of the other questions you're gonna see and you're gonna go, oh wow, that's, that's not hard at all. Exactly, it truly isn't. Okay, so now we're moving on. Same thing for number two. <clears throat> and then I think it starts to change up the questions, what we're asking. Okay, so this one has, that's <laughs> so funny, has a scale factor of three, just like in my notes, okay? So I'm gonna take this shape and I'm gonna go down to the dilation uh, tool and I'm gonna go up to three, and there we go. Now all I have to do is what are the endpoints of the original? Remember, this is the bigger than this, my scale factor is bigger. So this is my copy, this is my final, it's not my original, I have to go back to my original. My original, the, the top point there is five, six. And then the bottom is five, two. Okay, and then the endpoints of the final figure from top is, well, you know what, let's test something. We should be able to multiply the three times the five and the three times the six, the three times the five, the three times the two to get these endpoints. So let's try it. So five times three, 15. Five, um, sorry, six times three, 18. 
and then the bottom. <clears throat> 5 times 3, 15. 2 times 3, 6. Now let's just check. If I go to 15, 18, will I hit this point? Let's see. 15, 18. Sure did. If I go to 15, 6, will I hit this point? 15, 6. I did. See how it works? Okay. Now, we're moving on. Okay. Now there will be um, a few different questions on this. <laughs> you see my son's dog. Okay. So we have more questions this time. We don't, aren't just um, graphing the dilation. So it says a scale factor of three again. Okay, I'm okay with that. Push down hard and move it to the right till you hit three. Okay, <clears throat> it's not that hard, you'll see. There is my copy, my final, there's my original. Now we have to answer questions. The longest side of the length of the original figure, of the original, this is the longest side. Hopefully you can tell that's the longest side. It's two units, two boxes. So that's, oops, so that's what you put in, in there. You just count how many boxes is that longest side. You just answer the questions, you know. Okay, and of the final, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, do you notice something? Two times the scale factor of three equals six. So I could just do the small one and do the scale factor times three and I get six. It'll work just like that. You don't have to count the boxes. You need to count the, you can count the boxes of the original two, but then do the scale factor times three, you get six. And that would be the next answer. Fill in the blank to make a true statement. The longest side of the final figure, so that long side that was six right here, equals what times the longest side, the little one of the original. So, so we have the longest side, which is six, equals two times what? Basically, this answer here is your scale factor. They're saying what times the longest side of your original gives you the longest side of your, your uh, copy. And it's your scale factor, it's three. Whatever the scale factor is, it goes in there. Okay, and this is where <clears throat> this part comes in. Remember I talked about that? Scale factors are bigger than one. Your resulting shape is larger or bigger. And if it's less than one, if you have a fraction for a scale factor, your resulting figure, your final figure is smaller than the original. Okay, so it says, true or false, a dilation with a positive greater factor, scale factor greater than one gives a final figure smaller than the original. That's not true. If the scale factor is less than one. See, if it's, if it's greater than one like this, it's going to be the, the final figure will be larger. So this is false, okay? Okay, next, true or false, the original figure and the final figure are similar. I'm just gonna let you know, every time you can multiply anything or do, use a scale factor with an original shape, whatever shape you get is going to be similar, okay? Everything's going to correspond. Each side is two times bigger from this side, or not two, three. In this case, the scale factor three, this is, each side is three times bigger. Okay, so as a result, yes, it's similar. Similar means the same shape, but different sizes. We blow up the size, we shrink the size, but it's still the same shape. Okay, so that's true. And then we're done with that question. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go a little faster here. Okay, now we have a scale factor to do one half, so it's less than one. So first I'm gonna drag my little toolbar here and I'm gonna change the tool, uh, the, change the, the scale from one to one half. By the way, I'm gonna go back to one. Right now, my blue shape is, is mapping over, it's co completely covering without any overlap, my original. So the scale factor of one means it's the same shape. I could say, hey, give me a scale factor of one for this. Okay, there you go. It's the exact same shape, just copied everything about it, and it just lays right on top of it. Okay, now I'm gonna go to one half though. There we go. So let's answer the questions. 
the longest side of the original figure. The original was this, and it goes from zero to eight, so that's eight units. Okay, the longest side of the final. So the same side on the final. Well, if this sale factor is one half, then what's half of eight? Four. And if you don't, if you're not positive, look from zero to four. Now, see, four, eight. And then what do we, what did we multiply times each or divide by, but no, we're multiplying. <laughs> How do you get from the larger to the smaller? You multiply the, the, um, the original by one half. And for this, I have to use the tool over here. So it's gonna be one half, okay? My scale factor goes in there, whether it's larger than one or less than one. <clears throat> and it says, if the, the, the fail, scale factor is less than one, the final figure is larger, no. If it's less than one, it's smaller. And the original figure and the final figure are similar, always. This will always be true, okay? Then we move on. I think this moves on to now something it's not the same type of questions now we're not talking about a side length we're talking about the area okay this has a scale factor of two so that's the same I do still create the new shape with the dilation okay and notice whatever this order pair is when it is two times bigger it's going to go to there when this is two times bigger that order pair is there when this is two times bigger that is there when this is two times bigger, it goes to there. And the, and the reason is that you're multiplying each of the original order pairs by two. So it's just gonna double that size. So see that side length is four and now it's eight, okay? And same with the order pairs. Each of the order pairs here times two are gonna give you these order pairs. And you just graph it like we did. What is the area of the original figure? This is the original figure. So it's four boxes across and it's six boxes up. Okay, so four times six is 24. So I'm gonna put this 24 in there. That's 24 square units for the original. What's the area of the final? Well, it's eight boxes. And then um, if this was six boxes and our, and our dilation is two, it should be 12 boxes. So let's see, we've got from four, it's four tall, and, it's, and then it ends at 16. So four plus what equals 16, 12. Each one of those little boxes, that's 12 boxes. So we have 12 times eight, all right? And what happens if you don't have it in your head? That's okay, I am showing you. You can always figure this out, y'all. Or use a calculator, you know, that's okay too. This is 96. So this area is 96, okay? So the final area is 96. Okay, and again, our area of the original was a four by six, and then we make this, um, the new shape will end up being eight by 12, okay? <clears throat> okay. So we now come down here. The area of the final figure, okay, which is 96, the area of the final figure equals 24 times what? Okay, so the area of the original was 24. So what times 24 is 96? So 24 times what is 96? Four. So I know that you're saying, why isn't it just two? Well, we have two dimensions, okay? We have a length and we have a width, and each of the length was doubled and the width was doubled. And so when you double it, you actually have to multiply by four because you have two dimensions that you're talking about. That's doubling it by two times two, that's four. So we're gonna put in the area of the final figure equals 
four times. Four times the original of the final, of the, uh, the area of the final figure is four times the area of the original figure. And again, we know that it is similar. Okay, so I'm gonna erase that. Just waiting for it to move on. Okay, now we're going to do a dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of three. That's a teeny tiny little shape, isn't it? Okay, so we're going to move our toolbar down here to three. Okay, um, and now answer the questions. The area of original figure is two because I count two boxes, it's pretty easy. Now this one, so two, four, six boxes by three boxes, meaning I just multiply each of those lengths by three, all right? So one times three is three, and then two times three is six. So a three by six is 18. Okay, fill in the blank to make a true statement. All right, so I've got my area this is uh, 2, and this is 18, okay? And the area of the final equals what times the area of the original? Okay. So we've got 2 and 18, so we're going to put in 9. And we're going to say, yes, they are similar. Okay, and just for grins, we will check this. And we got it right. Okay, so if you're not sure, you can just check it the whole time. Again, you just, for this answer here, I'm basically going to say what times the original gives me my final. Okay. All right. Since it was three times um, bigger, we had to make our length three times bigger and our width three times bigger. So three times three is nine altogether. Okay. So continue. All right, moving on to number seven. Here we go. Draw the image of the following segment after dilation centered at the origin with a scale factor of two thirds. Okay, so that means we're gonna times all of our ordered pairs by two over three. And some of you are going, I hate fractions. I know, but guess what? This all works out real simple. Now they're not giving me any endpoints, so I have to see where those endpoints are. I need two ordered pairs. Watch what I do. I've got this order pair, the, the lower one, is 12 and 9. 12 for the X and go up 9. 12 to the right and 9. And then the, the top point is still 12, but this time I go up to 12. Okay, now I want you to watch. This is going to be super easy. I have to multiply everything by 2 thirds. That's basically, again, your scale factor. So now, watch what I do over here. First off, when I figure out what 12 is, I can use it there, there, and there in my new uh, shape, okay? And I, and I then, I'm not gonna draw anything until I get my order pairs. See, there's no, no scale factor thing down here, toolbar. So I'm gonna have to get my new order pairs by multiplying each of these numbers by 2 thirds. So what happens when I multiply 12 times two over three? Well, 12 times two is 24. You scoot it over a little bit. <clears throat> it's 24 divided by three, and that's equals eight. I hate run-ons, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it here for lack of space. 
All right, or you could have said three goes into three once, three goes into 12 four times, and four times two is eight. All right, so everywhere there's a 12, because I only, once I do it once, it's good for all, because everything's being multiplied times two thirds. So here, that becomes an eight. Here, that becomes an eight and an eight. I only need one more number, nine. Nine over one times two thirds. You could say three goes into three once, three goes into three, nine, three times, and three times two is six, but I'll do it this way in case people just go, what, I don't know how to do that. Don't know how to cancel. Nine times two is 18 divided by three. 18 divided by three equals six. So th this number was six. Do you see how it all worked out so beautifully and I ended up with all these t just totally whole numbers here? It will be friendly like that every single time. It'll be that easy. So now I am not done, all right? There's, I haven't entered my new shape. I have to draw this shape. I have to go to eight, six using my tool. Okay, eight, six, because I started at zero, zero, because I'm dilating out from zero, zero, I'm putting, I'm using my new order pairs. And then eight, eight. Okay, and then connect with the line. And I'm done. Now, I didn't say anything, but when I am, using two thirds as my scale factor. Remember, that's less than one. So my original shape should be bigger than my final, and it is. This is only two boxes tall. This is three boxes. Oh, two, three. Oh, two, three. Hmm. Wonder if there's some sort of, of pattern there. Uh-huh, there is. Okay, here we go, moving on. <clears throat> Let's see, we're on number eight. My dog got bored. Okay, scale factor of three over two. Some of you are saying, oh, another fraction, so it's less than one. Wait a second, what's three over two? That's an, that is an improper fraction. The top is bigger than the bottom. Well, two goes into three one whole time with a remainder of one, because three take away two is one. That's one and one half. Three halves, three halves, you can hear it. There's a hole in there, and then there's a half left. So that's actually bigger than one. It, they're trying to be tricky. So this shape is going to be smaller than my copy, which is going to be th one and a half times bigger. Okay, so we're going to get our order pairs, which are, I have to see the x axis, 6, 12. And then my second order pair, I just did that one, and this one is 10, 12. Well, once I figure out 12, it's going to be the same number for the, when I make my copies, okay? And then I have to do six and I have to do 10, but that's okay. I'm not going to use one and a half in my calculations. I'm going to use three halves. So six, I'll start here. Six times three over two, okay? I could cross cancel. Some of you are and you've already seen the answer, but that's okay. So I'm going to do this for other people that don't like canceling. Six times three is 18. 18 divided by two is nine. So this six just became a nine. It's one and a half times bigger. And think about it, what's half of six? Three. So I've got a whole six in here, and then I've got three extras. That's because I got a whole six and then a half of six. I've got six and a half of six, which is three, which makes nine. Wow. Okay, then, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 12. 12 times three over two, okay? 12 times three, 36 divided in half. Half of, 30, uh, half of 36 is 18. Or I could have said two goes into two once, two goes into six, uh, 12, six times, six times three is 18. So this number here is 18. And this number here is 18. Now I just gotta do 10. 10 times, I'm doing that point, the x value, times, <coughs> excuse me, three over two. Okay, that equals 30 divided in half, and that's 15. So this number's 15. Now I can graph, okay? 
I, I have the original. Now I've got my copy, 918. So why am I using my, so using my pen? I don't need to do that. Okay, nine up to 18, all the way up here. Now I kind of lost my nine again. There's nine and 18. Oof, it's way up there. Oh, how, how about getting this? Okay, that's why. Look, see, this also helps. Now I put it on nine, it's so much easier. Yep, much easier. And then 15, 18. So I gotta go find 15, 15. Oopsie, stay on 15. And then as same height, 18. Then I connect with the dot, the uh, line rather. Okay, and there we go. There's my original, starting from zero, zero. There's my original, starting from zero, zero. There's my copy, and it's one and a half times bigger. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> All right, we've only got two more. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. Um... So this looks like what? Looks really scary. All there, all we have to know is, first off, that's my original because there's no apostrophe. And my final, this is my pre-image before I do anything to it. And then my final is here, what I call my image because of the little prime symbols. So that's R prime, S prime, T prime, okay? And here they are, R prime, S prime, T prime. They just want the final coordinates. I really, I can look at this and I can go, okay, so where, what's that point? Or you know what I can do? It says the scale factor of three has been applied. So I can take three and multiply all of these numbers times three to get these numbers. It is exactly the, what you're supposed to do. So three times negative one, negative three. Three times four, 12. Keep going, three times three, nine. Two times three, six. Negative three times three, negative nine. And then negative one times three, negative three. That's all you do, okay? So I'm gonna scroll down and now answer questions. <clears throat> what is all this? This is really very easy. What was our scale factor again? Do you remember? It's three. So I am multiplying X's by three, okay? So it would, and if I said X times three, I usually say three times X, right? Okay. So I'm multiplying my X's and I'm multiplying, move this over just a little bit, I'm multiplying my Y's by three. My scale factor is three. Scale, scale factor, scale factor. And this is the X in the order pair and the Y in the order pair. So really they're saying, what do I do? And when I have my order pair, X, Y, this is what I do to my X and my Y. This number here is the scale factors, they're saying. There's the different scale factors. So I need to see where it says three times the X and three times the Y. And it is in that order. They keep it in X, Y order over here. So that really eliminates everything and you're just looking, basically, this is what you're looking for. That's gonna be your answer, so find it. Nope, that's one third. Nope, Y is first. They will do that. They'll trick you and put Y is first. I can zoom in a little bit, I think. Okay, we're looking for three X, three Y. Nope, they only did it to X. There it is. So you click that, okay? Now, I am gonna show you the other options that they had, none of which show three X and three Y. That one doesn't have the X, that one's a fraction again, that one's one whole number and one fraction, and that's one fraction and one whole number. So really, it'll, it'll just jump out at you. You look at your scale factor next to the X, comma, scale factor next to the Y. And that's what we call the rule. It's a general rule. And they're saying for every ordered pair, this is what you're going to do. The, arrows like this is what you're going to do. Multiply each of the X's by three, multiply each of the Y's by three. Okay, so we are done with that one and we're on the last one. And I appreciate your patience with this. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that the first time I teach it, 
is the last time I teach it because you'll get it the first time, I'm hoping. Okay, again, here's the, now the scale factor is one half. So I do know that my original was larger and it shows here the image here, uh, D prime, E prime, D prime, E prime, F prime are all smaller than the regular D, E, F, the original D, E, F. So I know this is going to be one half of these points. Okay. So what's one half applied to the six? Three. Half of six, half of four. They'll all be simple like that. Half of four. Now, what is half of negative eight? You want to keep the negative with it because it's negative four. Negative four and negative four make negative eight. So half of negative eight is negative four. What's half of negative 12? Negative six. What's half of negative four? Negative two. All these order pairs are what you see here. And now let's just look for the rule. We're looking for one half times X and one half times Y. Do you see it? See if you can find it. Hopefully you see it as easily as I do. It looks like it could have been here, but see the Y is first and then the X, but this has the Y and then the X. I mean, I'm sorry, the X and then the Y. So it's one half and that's what we want. One half X, one half Y. No negatives or anything. The negatives were in the original order pairs that we were working with, with each of the order pairs. So don't worry, you'll never have a negative scale factor, okay? And that's it. That is the end of this lesson. Whew.